Three, two, one. Hey, internet friend, it's Magic Brad with the Magic Brad Show. And guess what? I've got Rocky on the line and not that one that fights. It's a different one. His last name is Lalvani. Are you there, Rocky? I am here. Thank you so much for having me on, Magic Brad. I love the name Rocky. Not because of Sylvester Stallone, but it's just kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> I interviewed a guy. He calls himself the Cigarette Whisperer. His name was Rocky, and he, he helps people quit yeah. smoking. Okay. Some people call me the prospect, the profit whisperer. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, or the money whisperer. Because I, I, for me, I get the flow of money. Yep, that's good to know. I mean, I was just uh, doing some talk on that, that money is nothing but a measurement system. And you need to know how it flows. It's kind of like an energy. You know, I've got the energy to go and do what I do. And I convert it into money. And then I give it to you. And it's just a measurement system to prove my value. And now you've got these little units of whatever the heck they are. And it's, it's getting weird with all the Bitcoin stuff and all that. I kind of wonder where it's going to all go, you know? That is very true. But again, it's what you talked about. You have to measure it and you have to remove the emotions. People put too much emotion around money. And there is no emotion in money itself. You know, a dollar bill is a dollar bill. And unfortunately, people have been taught a lot of money emotions. And most of our money emotions and, and the way we create our money stories is usually happens between five and 12 years of age. Like you heard all the things your parents told you or somebody in your family, money doesn't grow on trees. We can't afford that. Rich people are evil. And, and if those things are running around subconsciously in your mind and you're 40 years old and you still think rich people are evil, guess who's not getting rich? Wait, is that, is that some of the stuff that you work with people on is the mindset and getting rid of that, uh, that, that illusion? I, I'm not, the expert in changing the mindset. Yeah. Um, what I do is I help people become aware of their mindsets. What I do more so is look at the, the dollars and cents, the, the spreadsheets and the, the balance sheets and the cash flow okay. statements and help them make better choices in their business. Okay, got it. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I, on that topic of what money is, because as you're saying that, I could hear my mom going, money doesn't grow on trees. We can't afford it. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And I remember uh, one day I was in my office and, you know, sometimes you use a paperclip to pick on something, you know, you get something to push a little button to pry something. I use a paperclip, I bent it open. And then I realized I was bending it back because I didn't want to waste it. Mm -hmm. It's a paperclip. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I had that mentality of you don't want to waste a paperclip. And uh, granted, sometimes you don't want to, you know, frivolously waste money and things, but having that scarcity mindset, it's something you want to get rid of and realize that it's, uh, you know, if you, if, heck with the paperclip, let's get back to work. And that's the thing. You have to balance time versus money. Yeah. And that's where a lot of people don't put the value. They don't, they forget the value of time, right? I can always get more money. I can never get more time. Exactly. Now I can, I can have people help me and buy their time so that I don't have to do something. But once it's gone, it's gone and you can never get it back. And so you have to have a time value of money. Yeah. I've heard that uh, time is money. And I thought, no, it's not. Cause if it was, we'd all have the same <laughs> amount. <laughs> so you actually is, get into the books of the business and get people to understand all that stuff. I do. So I, I partnered with Mike McCallowitz who wrote the book profit first. And Mike is an entrepreneur who had a uh, tremendous success, seven figure exit, thought he was the smartest businessman in the world, and then lost all of the seven figures. And he realized, I'm not as smart as I think. I'm making mistakes. How do I, how do I create systems so that I can be an entrepreneur and go do the things I want, but the systems are working in the background, making sure everything is handled. And one of the systems he created was a system for money within the business. And that's what Profit First is all about. So you've probably heard of Dave Ramsey. Sure. You know the envelope system from Dave Ramsey? Um, not specifically. I've heard of it, but I don't know. So what basically what it is, is you take money and when it comes in, you designate what you want to spend it on. You give every dollar a job and you put it in the envelope. And when there's no more in the envelope, you stop spending. Right. 
did the same thing for businesses. Instead of using envelopes, though, we use bank accounts. So money comes in and it flows to where it should be designated to be used. And then when it's time to use it, it's there. What happens more often than not is it's, and it comes down to Parkinson's law. Businesses will use up all the resources you give them. And so the more a business owner sees in his bank account, the more he will spend. But business owners are smart. They're very resourceful. If there's less money in the account to spend, the business owner will find a way to get it done for less. And that's just the way it works. Most business owners are not looking at their financial statements. They don't understand them and they don't want to read them. They love what they do. They're not accountants. And so the system does is it, it gives them a smaller bank balance to look at. So they spend more appropriately, but they get paid first. They take out for taxes and they make sure they're profitable because they take profit off the top. So it might change the equation. The standard equation used to be sales minus expenses equals profit. Profit comes left. It's crumbs. It's leftovers. It's something your accountant tells you when they give you your tax return and you ask where that money is and they just laugh at you and say you spent it. So he changed the equation to sales minus profit equals expenses. You pay yourself first and you have that physical money set aside and you take a quarterly distribution just like big corporations do, right? Yeah. And you pay yourself exactly. and it's a really simple system. It's all explained in the book and you can implement it. And the problem is people don't do simple because doing simple is hard. We want this complicated solution for our business right. instead of just doing simple. And it comes down to, there's a simple principle that I think business owners don't realize. A dollar in revenue is not equal to a dollar spendable. More often than not, if you've got $100 in revenue, it's only generating three, four, five dollars in spendable expenditures beyond your normal spending. But the $100 comes in the bank account, the bank, you know, the business owner looks and goes, I've got $100 to spend. And he forgets he's got cost of goods, employees, payroll right. tax, his pay. You forget about all that stuff. And so the system helps to fix all of those problems. I and see. so you, you look at your bank account and you see what's truly there. Yeah, that uh, brings up a couple things. I remember I was working with a guy out in LA and he was wondering, how come I'm not making any money? And every year I'm like busting my butt, we bring a bunch of money in. And he didn't have anything in his spreadsheet for his salary. He didn't have mm -hmm. his paycheck. And he realized that mm -hmm. and we just put a little line item in there for that. And all of a sudden, Hey, I'm making money. So I, I and see nothing exactly has changed, right. <laughs> and that's exactly what this is. We, we put a line item for your salary. We put a line item for profit. And so it, it flows when you tell it what to do, it'll go where you tell it to go. Yeah. And you need to have all those things in place. So it's just kind of like the concept of like compounding. Mm -hmm. That's a good thing, but it goes the other way too. It does. Right. <laughs> it goes both ways. We talk about compounding a lot. I mean, that is a force of nature that is phenomenal, mm -hmm. but you've got to compound in the right direction and you have to let the compound work. Everyone wants something tomorrow, right? We want it immediately. Compounding takes time. That's the way I built wealth. I did it the old fashioned way, compounding mm -hmm. a little bit at a time. And that's what we do even with profit first. So you can't go from zero to 20% profit margin. It just doesn't happen. But we can go to 1% today. And in two months, we can go to 2%. And in six months, we can go to 3%. And in a year, maybe we're at 5 or 6%. And so we're just constantly tightening the screws over time and making those little things. And next thing you know, you've got money flowing to you instead of everyone else. Right. Yeah. You pay yourself first. It's kind of like uh, you plant a seed and you get just one little root going into the ground. Eventually there's multiple roots going into the ground and multiple things growing up. It takes some time. And that's what a lot of people don't realize. They're looking for that microwave, kind of push the button, make the money. And it takes some time. I know that uh, I've got some stuff set up in my bank account that's just really, really basic where, you know, the one account, it takes it and it puts money into another account automatically every week. And then a piece of that goes into my, uh, I'm invested in REITs. Mm -hmm. So it goes into there automatically. And then that way there's no emotion involved with it. Like, oh, I don't right. know. But I, I wish that my bank would let me do it percentage wise instead of a flat fee, flat, flat amount. But for mm -hmm. some, they probably don't let you do that because that's too, that'd be too powerful to be able to do a percentage. To do it. Yeah. Well, so like 401ks let you do percentage. 
but your bank doesn't. And so what the profit first system does is that you have to sit down and do it manually, mm -hmm. but we figure out your percentages and then you do exactly what you say. You look at how much came in and you put it in the spreadsheet and it, it has all your percentages and says, okay, move this amount, move this amount, move this amount. You tell your bookkeeper or somebody to do it. So it takes you out of the situation. Again, it removes all the emotions. The more you make, the more that gets set aside. So I had a client who, um, his, um, his business exploded one year. And what happens with business- Good, good or bad? Good. good. Like okay. just blew up okay. financially. Not tons and tons of new revenue. Here's what happened. His tax accountant was doing his quarterlies based on the previous year. So all of a sudden, he's got all this excess revenue. Comes tax time, the accountant goes to call him up. And she's like three weeks late calling him up. And she says, I've been dreading this call. He's like, what's wrong? She's like, you owe a lot in taxes. He goes, I know. I, I knew that my business had done really well this past year. And he's like, how bad is it? And she's like, it's almost six figures. And he says, all right, I'll drop off checks tomorrow. And she was shocked. She goes, never in my 23 years has anyone ever said that to me. And he's like, you know, he told me, he goes, I had more money than that in the bank account because he had been taking the percentage every month, setting it aside, and he was ready. So as much as I hate and everyone hates paying taxes, at least knowing that you're covered and you're good, you sleep at night, right? Totally. It, it just makes it so much easier. And so that's part of, of what the system does for you. you it know, works in the background and it's magical. And I know you like magic. <laughs> I'm just going to say the, the, the magic thing when I was doing my magic business, I'm not good with math. So what I would do when I had to write out a check for something, if, the, if it was like for $74, I would round it up to 100. And that's how my balance worked. So at the end of the year, I would look at my balance. I go, hey, vacation money. And I would use the, the part to pay taxes and part to go to Jamaica every year. And I used to just round it off every time I did something. It didn't matter what it was. I'd round it off to the next either $10 or $100. Just round it up. Because I didn't, I didn't want to balance my checkbook. It was just too much work. So you're, you're using all the principles of profit first. You've done it all your life. I am, but it's not set up in a, like what it sounds like what you're doing is you're actually going into a spreadsheet and being able to look at someone's expenses like rent and insurance and employee salary mm -hmm. and all. We got to get a new sign on the storefront. Well, it's going to have to wait because, you know, it sounds like you get, you get really into that kind of stuff. I do. Business owners love to spend money. And what I do is I give them permission not to spend money. And I also help them figure out how to get the results without spending as much. So I have some business owners who are spending a lot of money every month on a particular service. I'm like, why are you picking that service? Can we find a cheaper service that produces the same thing at the same or pretty close in quality? And more often than not, they can save 20, 30, 40, 50, 80% in their spending just by taking a few minutes to go, is there a better way to do this? Mm -hmm. you no, know, even just picking up the phone, you said insurance, call the insurance agent, anything you can do for me, any way to cut this cost, you'd be shocked. They come back. And if you constantly do that with every single bill over time, you become lean and mean in a business that's lean and mean builds up cash vault. And when you have a cash vault and COVID comes, you go, I can survive this storm. And there are always going to be storms. Storms happen all the time. And so being ready for them is wonderful. Instead of always, you know, when times are good, business owners ignore the numbers. Right. They're too busy being busy. They're too busy being busy. Oh, they'll just take care of themselves. They don't. When you, things are good is when you should be compounding your money somewhere else, sucking it out of the business and building your vault of cash. Getting ready for the storm because it's... Uh... It's inevitable. It's going to happen. It's just a matter of when, mm -hmm. right? You yeah. just don't know when. And it, it could, some, most of the times the storms are small in that they only affect you. It's not like this, which is affecting the entire economy. Uh, but we all have our own storms, whether it be health or family illness or tech. I mean, technology is just crippling certain industries. And so you never know when your industry is going to be affected by a new software or new tech or something else. Totally. And um, I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of little things that, uh, oh, we won't worry about that. I, like, personally, I've got, I think, two or three different uh, 
email automation systems. Some of them I really don't need, but I just hang on to it just in case. But it is an expense that do I really need that? Mm -hmm. Because it is monthly drains. Software services quickly add up. The biggest thing you want to watch out for is monthly expenses that just keep hitting your bottom line that you forget about. You're like, oh, yeah, I forgot. We did sign up for that, and I haven't used it in a year and a half. Yeah. And Or the other thing that happens, so right now we're on Zoom, right? I had one of my guys I was talking to, he was on a old Zoom plan that was grandfathered. The old Zoom plan was three and a half times the cost of the new Zoom plan. Right. Quick phone call, and you're saving. You know, it's that constant checking and saying, hey, is there a better or cheaper way to do this? Right. And a lot of that stuff, you, like you said, grandfathered in, you don't know what the heck really happened. It's good to, in fact, I'm going, I'm doing that right now. I'm looking at my old statements, just looking at each little thing, go, what the heck is this thing for $7 and 95 cents? And why do I need it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Cause it adds up. It may not be much, much per month, but at the end of the year, when you times it 12, it's like, Whoa, what's that all about? That was a car payment. Yeah. <laughs> and that's, I mean, it, that's what happens a lot of times. Like when I look at my credit card bills, I'm like, how is it thousands of dollars? And I go down the list and everything's double digit, right? It's tons and tons of small things add up over time. So yeah, you have to be, you have to take the time to do that because your employees don't care. It's not their money. Right. They're going to spend it left and right. Hey, I needed to get this done. We needed to get it out. And they're not looking at it from a cost perspective. They're just looking at it. Hey, do I please the boss? And can I blow his money? It's in the budget. What the heck? Let's spend it. Yep. It's in the budget. That was notorious in the event industry. All of a sudden, we need another table. We'll just put it over there. Okay. You need to know. Okay. And you realize that each table is $100 to rent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Whoa. Just spent a thousand bucks for these extra tables. <laughs> in the blink did, of an eye, right? Did you say that you had a book yourself? Or is that something? I do else? not have a book myself. It's it, The book is Mike's and I partner with Mike. So, okay. I go through extensive training with him on how his systems work. And then they provide a lot of the back office support to be able to, you know, there's so many different types of businesses out there and it's nice to be able to have a, a network behind you that says, yeah, you know what? I did deal with that. Here's how you do it. And here's what's special about that particular nuance. Right. So we have a, a ton of people that work together behind the scenes, but I work very closely with, my customers and help them to make sure that they're appropriately spending and that they're building wealth for themselves. And it's helpful to use someone like yourself instead of trying to do it themselves because you may have walked down that road very similarly and say, Hey, my uh, client Steve is running into this and it's applicable to your situation. Maybe mm -hmm. we should take advantage of that. Well, and beyond that, a lot of times business owners are busy doing the parts of the business they love. And right. what I have found is 80% of business owners hate the financials. So that means four out of five business owners aren't even looking. I don't like the outgo. I like the income, but I don't like the outcome. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, and we talk about it, you know, uh, revenue is vanity. Profit is sanity and cash is king. <laughs> right. And what happens though is it's very easy to see what the top line is. Cause you know, Hey, I just sold a contract. I got a hundred thousand dollars coming in. Woohoo, we can spend. But the reality is the profit margin on that $100,000 deal might only be three or $4,000. And if you go out and spend eight, you just, you just put yourself on a hamster wheel. You will never get off. Right. That's why having someone to hold you, it's like going to the gym, right? I can go to the gym and I can do it all myself. Or I can go to the gym and I can have a trainer and a dietitian and a cook and I will get so much further faster and I will stick to the plan because I've got people around me helping me make sure that it gets done. Sure. It's, that's essentially what I do for people. I make sure their numbers are done and done appropriately and you get held accountable. And when you want to go chase a shiny object, my clients will email me, go, hey, I want to spend on this. And we'll have a little bit of dialogue. What's the return on that investment? How do you know it's actually going to work? Have we tested it? Have you called a couple of clients to see if they'll buy? Have you, have you test marketed it and put the product up and see if we can get a couple of pre-orders? So I kind of rein them in a little bit to test before they go. And then they know that they made the right decision and then we appropriately spend. Or a lot of times they may say, hey, I want to do this and I'm going to spend on this. And like, wait a minute, 
why don't we try these three free resources first? And if they don't solve the problem, then we can start thinking about spending instead of just, because we all get excited. Somebody comes to the business, tells us how they're going to 10X our money and do all of this stuff. And, and the reality is, is most businesses, 10X is not enough because the profit margin isn't enough to support a 10X return. Most people need a 20X return on a 5% profit margin. That's just to break even. So you got to do 20X to break even. You got to do 30 or 40X to be profitable or 50X. And that's why watching that bottom line and thinking about every dollar going out is so important. Got it. Well, I try not to do these too long and keep them condensed so people can listen to them and watch and listen to what's going on. So how, if someone wants to work with you, I'm assuming you might have some kind of some, something on your website or how, how they can contact you and maybe a little, uh, little. Yeah. So there's a couple things. Uh, if you go to profit comes first, that is my website. And from there, you can hop over to the podcast, which is Profit Answer Man. And I lay out all the principles in the Profit Answer Man podcast of how you can do this. I go through each chapter in the book, explain the top line principles, make it easy for you. If you want, you can also grab two chapters of the book for free there as well. And then I have another podcast, which is called Richer Soul. So the tagline there is you got rich, now what? So after you're profitable, how do you build the life of your dreams? How do you enjoy all the money that you're making now. Well, perfect. Well, I will put those links in the description on YouTube and then when I'll get that YouTube link to you and if you can share it out there so we can get some views on it. Also, um, much appreciated. So Rocky, I appreciate you taking the time. It sounds like you're a wealth of knowledge and this is just skimming the surface of all the things that can be done. So perhaps down the road, we'll do something else. Okie dokie. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a pleasure to join you today. Thank you, sir. Peace.